Hey third grade, we are getting started with a new chapter today. We just finished up our chapter on geometry, chapter 13. We have already done some of these other next chapters, so we're skipping over um, to chapter 17. So uh, 14, 15, and 16. Uh, we did 14, that's over money. Um, chapter 15 was more geometry, and chapter 16 was... Uh, things about metric measurement, which is another way to do measurements. So we learned about um, gallons and feet and yards and pounds and things like that. There are other labels we can use for measurement, um, but those are things that I know that you're going to talk about in another grade. And so um, I feel that it's more important for us to get into doing um, multi more multiplication and division uh, before the end of the year. So we are going into chapter 17. If there's anything in the uh, chapter 14, which should actually be all turned in, but chapter 15, 16, um, in your review pages, if you want to, I don't know, do the back pages that has the practice, or just tear them out and throw them, or uh, do whatever you want with chapters 15 and 16, we will not be going over those, okay? So we just finished 13. We've already done 14. Now we're going into chapter 17. Chapter 17 is about multiplying by one digit numbers and you will see more about what that means when we get into it. But first of all, we have a new story to get into, uh, a new national park to visit. This, uh, this section is called Junior Ranger. If you want to open your work text to page 279, you can. Um, it doesn't have the same words mine does, but it gives you a picture to look at if you don't want to watch my face. I didn't know a national park could be so fun. We got to go hiking and watch bighorn sheep and learn what a, marm a, a marmot is, said Cyrus, skipping along the path with Horatio bounding alongside. Cyrus, Haley's energetic, curly-headed, eight-year-old brother, had joined her here at the Rocky Mountain National Park and was having the time of his life. Now they were headed to Junior Ranger headquarters to claim the Junior Ranger badge Cyrus had earned. He suddenly turned around and gave Haley a big grin, which was missing a tooth. You must learn a lot visiting all these parks, he observed. Haley smiled at her brother's enthusiasm. True, and not just about nature. Actually, I've learned a lot of things about math from a biblical worldview. What on earth does that mean? Cyrus asked. Haley explained. Well, to be specific, I've learned that math shows the world is designed and that math doesn't have all the answers, but that it can help us work and it can help us help other people. Cyrus stood fiddling with a loose tooth, still confused. Haley chuckled. I'll tell you what, let's try to find examples of how these truths show up in real life. I'm sure we'll be, we'll see one before long. When they finally reached the headquarters, Cyrus marched to the front desk. I'm here for my badge, he declared. Horatio hopped on the counter and gave a chirp as if to say he earned it. When they finally, uh, the man behind the desk, whose name tag read Ranger Dan, grinned. Well, I'd be happy to give it to you. He slid open a drawer and then his smile disappeared. I'm sorry, son. It appears we're all out of badges. He shrugged apologetically. I guess I need to order more. We never seem to order enough. Cyrus spoke up. It's all right, mister. If you'd like, we could help you figure out how many you need to order. Haley nodded. Yeah, we could use math to help you. Do you know how many badges you gave out last month? Shh, I got a baby, she's sleeping. Do you know how many badges you gave out last month? The ranger looked hopeful. Well, we keep records in the back. Let me go check. He ducked into the office and reappeared a minute later with a clipboard and pencil. Looks like last month we gave out 189 badges, he said. Haley thought for a moment. Well, maybe you could order maybe you could order enough for the next 3 months. If you do the math ahead of time, you'll be able to help people better and you won't run out of badges as soon, Haley explained. 
stranger, Dan nodded. Good idea. So, now what? Cyrus spoke this time. You should round up to estimate how many badges you'll need. The ranger tapped his head with his pencil, then scribbled something. I think I've figured it out, he said. Then he reached into his pocket. Oh, and I guess, and, and guess what I found in the office. His eyes twinkled as he held up a junior ranger badge. He handed it to Cyrus and ruffled the boy's hair. Haley and Cyrus thanked him and then turned to leave. As Horatio jumped under her shoulder, Haley looked at her brother. So, did you notice which world you truth about math we just used? Hey, already? Cyrus said with a surprise. I'll have to think about it. In the meantime, he said with a grin, which park are we headed to next? Okay. Spending time in the Rocky Mountain National Park is not like any other park for Haley, um, but not because the park is so different. Cyrus, Haley's little brother, has come with her this time, and it makes all the difference. Not only is Haley enjoying seeing the diverse animal life with Cyrus, but she also is teaching him the biblical worldview truths about math that she has been learning. This is quite a task, but Haley is up for the challenge. So on page 179 in your work text, it looks like this. Yes, right here. There are some um, other things that you can talk through with somebody in your house, maybe your mom or maybe a sister or somebody um, maybe younger than you, maybe older than you, somebody else in your house. Um, it says talk through each of the following scenarios to identify which biblical worldview truth listed above is being illustrated. So at the very top corner of page 279, it says serve with math. And it has those four different ways that we've been talking all year about how we can serve other people and serve God with math. Um, which I know even still might sound a little strange, but um, I want to talk about our four biblical worldviews. Um, so what we have is our first one, serving God with math. I know you can't read it, so I'll read it to you. The Bible teaches that God created people to work. Genesis 1.28. God instructed Adam to work in the Garden of Eden before sin ever came into the world. Work is accomplishing a task. Just like everything else that God created, work is good. Math is a powerful tool to help people do the work God gave them. The second one we've been learning is that math shows the world is designed. Studying math helps people see God's design. You can see design in animal structures, snowflakes, and flowers. Simple and complex designs show evidence of planning. This shows that only God could have designed this world. Third, math helps people help people. People are special because they are made in God's image, Genesis 1.27. This means we should love other people by meeting their needs, Matthew 22.39. Math can help make people's lives better and can even save lives. People can use math to love each other as God commanded. And our fourth biblical worldview, math does not have all the answers. Math helps people do many things, but it cannot do some things. Math cannot tell you who God is or how the world came to be. It cannot tell you what is right or wrong. Only God can teach you these important things through the Bible. So my question for you is, what is the biblical worldview um, that would help Cyrus answer Haley's question about which one they've used. When they helped Ranger Dan, which of these truths did they use? Did they uh, use math as a tool to help people work? Math shows the world is designed. Math helps people help people. Math does not have all the answers. This one is math helps people help people. I know that as a tool to help people work, that one sounds like it could be good too, 
Um, but if you look at the top of the box on the page of uh, page 280, page 280 in your work text, serve with math, write the truth in the box at the top of your work text on page 280. If you think about in previous chapters, when you, um, we have that page um, in our work text that we always go back to, and we do um, one or two at a time throughout the chapter. That's this page, and it always has your biblical worldview at the top, but this time it's your job to write it. Write it in cursive. You should be writing in cursive. So at the serve with math, you're going to write, math helps people help people. Math helps people help people. That goes on the top of the page, and that line on page 280. Page 280 in your work text. Okay. Then you can put your work text away for now. We're going to get into our lesson for the day. You are going to need today your place value mat and your place value kit. So you'll need ones, tens, and hundreds. Um, if you don't have ones, take out some index cards and cut out some one squares. Um, what might be easiest for you to do if that's what you're going to do is to use markers or well I guess it doesn't matter markers paint crayons and color the whole card and then just cut it into strips and then cut it into squares okay um if you need to take some time to do that go ahead and pause the video and do that so you'll need ones you'll need your tens and hundreds and you will need um your place value mats okay so if you need to go get those, go get those now. I'm going to keep going. Today we're learning, um, you will use your knowledge about multiplication that you already have. You're going to use your knowledge about multiplication to multiply a two-digit factor by a one-digit factor. You'll also solve multiplication uh, math stories, word problems, okay? Um, if I, oh, let me see. Oh, I'm going to fold myself up in this chair again. That's been a problem before, you know. I should probably stop sitting in a lawn chair. Maybe that would help me not do that. Okay. If I write this, okay, two plus two plus two equals. What you need to do is you need to take out your ones, your purple and red ones, and please have three sets of two ones. So you should have three sets if you have your place value mat. There's one, two, there's one set. There's two sets. One, two, three sets of two on your place value mat have three sets of two there on your place value mat. Okay, three sets of two. So tell me then, if this is what we've got, what is the multiplication equation that you can use that's similar to this? Remember, multiplication is repeated addition. So what's the multiplication equation you can write for the repeated addition equation of two plus two plus two. What's the repeated, the multiplication equation? Okay, we could have three times two. The other way that we could write this is to write it vertically, so horizontally. Vertically, we would write three times Two. Remember, when you are writing equations, when you're reading and writing multiplication equations vertically, up and down, you read and write them from the bottom up. So this is not two times three. This is the same as this. It is three times two. Three times two. Okay, because that makes a difference. If I asked you to um, make a picture or to use your ones to make it, this would be three sets of two 
which is here. But if you did it the other way, two sets of three, it, you wouldn't get the same amount here, or you'd have the same amount. But your picture, your ones would not be grouped the same way as they need to be, okay? So make sure that you are, hi there, you sweet girl. Make sure that you are writing your equations from bottom to top, three times two. Okay, the repeated, uh, the repeated addition equation we have is two plus two plus two. As a multiplication equation, you get three times two. Okay, what is, th when you, with your ones, you have what is three sets of two? What is three times two ones? Three times two ones gives you well, two plus two plus two is six, but three times two ones gives you six. Three times two is six. Okay. Vertical multiplication, up and down. Those problems are read from the baseline up. Three sets of two equals six. Okay. Now, clear out your mat. There's one example. Now, we did this one. Which would be Twenty-one plus twenty-one plus twenty-one. What multiplication equation could we write for this problem? What's the repeated multi? Not the repeated. Excuse me. The multiplication equations we could write for these. What would they be? I don't want you to do anything with your tens and ones yet. You have. How many 21s here? How many? You have three sets of 21 over here. What equation would we write here? You have three sets of 21. Look here. I'm going to make this, I think, a little bigger. If I can. Okay. This is part of the reason why we write the multiple, read and write these multiplication equations the way that we do. Three sets of 21. Three times 21. When you are doing, um, when you are doing multiplication where you have a one digit number, and a two-digit number. The two-digit number goes on the top. Here's the other thing I'd like you to notice. In this equation, I'm going to get rid of these markers that I'm not going to be using here because they take up extra space that I need. I lined up the place values. So the, the 1 in the 21 is in the 1's place with the 3. Um, when you do addition, it doesn't necessarily matter which number goes on top of the other right here, right? If these were all different numbers, it wouldn't matter necessarily what they were. But what is so important, and I know some of you have found this out, is that the place values are all in this, all the same. Um, what I mean by that is that they're lined up. All the ones are on top of each other. All the tens are on top of each other. Then it would go hundreds, thousands, and so on. It's so important to do it that way in addition. It is also so, so important to do that with multiplication. I know my line's kind of crooked, um, but give me a break. I can only have one arm right now. You line up your place values. So that's, let's back up. 21 plus 21 plus 21. 21 plus 21 plus 21. As repeated addition equations are there. If you're going to write them as multiplication equations, you would say that you have three sets of 21. Three sets of 21 from bottom to top there. Okay? 
This means we have three sets of 21. So what I'd like for you to do is on your mats with your base 10 kits, take three sets of 21 and put them on your mat and I'll show you how I'm gonna do mine, okay? I'm gonna have tens and ones. So I'm gonna have two tens for 20 and then I'd have a one. And I'm gonna do that three times. I'm gonna to have to do that three times because we have three sets of 21, okay? So take out your base 10 pieces, do the same thing on your mats. There's one, 10, 20, and then one. There's two sets of 21, two sets of 21. And next I have, there's my third set of 10, 20, one. Okay, make sure you do the same on yours. You have your tens mat, you have your ones mat. If you don't, just put them in two separate piles. If you don't, for some reason, I'm pretty sure you all have your mats. If you do not, it's not super necessary, okay? You just need to have two different places for your ones and tens to be spread out, okay? Put three sets of 21 on your mats, as I have done on the board, okay? When you multiply a two-digit factor by a one-digit factor, you multiply one place value at a time. You multiply one place value at a time. So, this doesn't necessarily mean you have to know what 21 times 3 is off the top of your head. There are steps that we take so that you can figure out what your quotient is. So you'll multiply one place value at a time, starting with your smallest place value. When we have 23, when we have three times 21, in the number 21, which place, which, um, in which place do we have the smallest place value? Well, our smallest place value is our ones. Listen to this. It is the ones place, not because there is a, there, um, we multiply the ones place first, not because one is smaller than two, not because the one is smaller than the two. That just so happens to be how this equation looks. If this was a seven, we would still multiply this first because it is the smallest place value. It has nothing to do with what digit is there. Okay, I want to make sure you understand that. It has nothing to do with the digit but it has everything to do with the place value. So when multiplying a one digit number by a two digit number, you multiply starting in the smallest place value, which in this case is our ones place, okay? How many ones are in each set of 21? So in this set of 21, how many ones are there? One. In this set of 21, how many ones are there? Just one. In this set of 21, how many ones are there? There's one, oh no! There's one, one in each set of 21. Okay, so knowing that, how many, how many uh, what is three sets of one? Remember we're doing this in little steps. Three sets of one equals what? Three sets of one gives you, well, one, two, three ones, okay? Three sets of one gives you three ones. Oh, nice. Is that why you're crying? Big old burp. Three ones. How many tens are in each set of 21? How many tens here? Two. How many tens in this set of 21? Two. How many tens in this set of 21? Two. So how many tens are in each set of 21? Two. I'm not asking you the total. We're doing this one little step at a time. 
there are two tens in each set of 21. So what is three sets of two tens? Three sets of two tens. Two, four, six, but not just six. Three sets of two tens is six tens. We started with the ones place and we found that three sets of one, three, uh, what's the words I'm trying to use here? Three sets of one, that there's three ones, and two sets of, uh, th whoa, three sets of two tens, one, two, three sets of two in each. Three sets of two tens gives us six tens. So what is six tens and three ones? What is six tens and three ones? Six tens and three ones gives you 63. So back to our equation, what is three times 21? Well, it would be 63. That would be 63. Okay. I'm going to erase these. And I'm going to bring this over a little bit so you can see it better. Three times 21. Okay. Three times 21 there. When you multiply a two-digit number by a one-digit number, the two-digit number is written on top and the one-digit number is written in the ones place below that two-digit number, just like I have there. In the ones place below the two-digit number, okay? Three sets of one. Three sets of one is three ones. Where do you write the three in the product? Where do you write the three in your answer here? Did I say quotient? I said quotient at one point. That's not what I meant. I'm sorry. In the product, factor, factor, product. Three sets of one gives you three ones. Okay, you've multiplied the ones place. So that is what um, you write the three in the ones place in the product. Okay, next we have a two in the tens place. Three sets of two tens. I need to find a different color for you here. Mm, three sets of two tens. This time, I'm actually gonna color over this. I think black is better used so that I can keep your tens and ones all the same color. Sorry if that's hard to read, but you know what we're doing. Okay. Three sets of two tens. Three sets of two tens each. Three sets of two tens equals six tens. This is different than addition, okay? Three sets of two tens is 60. So it's three sets of two tens is six tens, which is 60. But you don't write 60 like this. You also do not put a zero here and then carry a six over to a hundreds place because that's not what we're doing. It's not addition. Multiplication and addition are similar, but they are not the same. They have different rules and different ways to go about them. So, even though, yes, 3 times 20 is 60, you don't use that zero because when you have the number 60, you have a zero in the ones place, and we actually have something in our ones place here. So that zero doesn't need to be anywhere because we are make, we've already got our ones place figured out. Three sets of two tens. Three sets with two tens each is 
60 is six tens. So we wrote the six in the tens place. So show, tell me then, what does three sets of 21 equal? 63. Okay, I'd like you to clear off your mats. We're gonna do another one. Clear off your mats. We're gonna do another one. If that was confusing, it's okay, cause uh, we're doing another one. Okay, our next equation. Two sets of 41. So we're gonna have two times 41. And I'm gonna have my mats, my tens. And my ones. Okay. My tens and my ones. The, re the repeated addition equation we would use here is 41 plus 41. That's what we would use. But since we're moving into multiplication, I'm only writing the multiplication equation. Notice that both of my equations are the same. One is horizontal and one is vertical, but they would read the same way. 2 times 41. 2 times 41. Not 41 times 2. When you're doing one digit times two digit, the two digit number is on top. The one digit number is on the bottom, on the baseline, in the ones place. See that my place values are lined up here. Keep that important. Don't put this multiplication symbol in the tens place. Don't put it in the tens place. The tens place is empty because there are no tens here. So scooch that multiplication symbol over just a bit. Okie doke. Okay, we're gonna multiply two times 41. How many ones are in each set of 41? Well, first we gotta make them. So, with your tens and ones, you're gonna make two sets, sets in each set. So two sets, I'm gonna have four tens, and I'm gonna have one, one. How many sets do I have right now? This is one set. I need two. So one, two, three, four tens and just one, one. Do that on your mats. If you need more time, pause the video. Okay, you have two sets with four tens and a one in each set. Yes? Yes. In the number 41, the smallest place value we have is the ones place. Again, not because there's a one in the ones place, but because this is the smallest place value that we have. This is gonna make more sense when we get into doing what's called decimals. Remember when we talked about money, the little period that separates this, the dollars from the change? That period is called a decimal. There are numbers that are actually smaller than one. It's kind of like fractions. One half is smaller than one, yes? So when you write that as a decimal, you put a, a, a decimal and then you'd make the rest of the number. So the reason I'm telling you, using the language that I'm using, saying the smallest place value, is because when it comes to decimals, for example, okay, this number here, these numbers have a place value that are smaller than a one. This is a ones place. The decimal means the and, which is smaller than one. So when I say the smallest place value, what number is in the smallest place value? That's why that's important to know because you will need that for later because someday you will multiply with decimals. So 
In our case, we don't have decimals, but our smallest place value is either our tens or our ones, and which is the smallest place value that we have? The ones is our smallest place value. How many, uh, what is two sets of one? What is two sets of one? We have two ones. Okay, how many tens are in each set of 41? Here's a set of 41, here's a set of 41. How many tens are in each of those sets? You have four tens in each set. So what is two sets of 40 ones? Two sets of 40 tens, four tens, excuse me. Two sets of four tens. 10, 20, 30, 40. 10, 20, 30, 40. Two sets of four tens gives you eight tens. Okay? Eight tens. So, now, what is eight tens and two ones? Eight tens is how many? Wow, eight tens is 80, two ones is two, eight tens plus two ones gives you 82. This, we just did multiplication here. We just answered this equation, 82. Now we need to do it like this. Oh no, she doesn't wanna do them like that. You don't wanna do them like that. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to. That's how we. One place value at a time, starting with our smallest place value. In this case, it is our ones place. Two sets of one is what? Two sets of one. Two sets of one is two. Next. Two sets of four tens. Two sets of four tens is what? Eight tens or 80. 82. Eight tens, two ones, 82. Okay, clear your mats. Let's do another. Clear your mats. Let's do another. Okay, our next equation, we're gonna have, can you see if I write it right here? You can. Five sets of 11. Have your mats. I'm gonna make mine, I'm gonna set mine up a little higher. Tens. Ones. My equation. My hor excuse me, my <laughs> vertical equation is five times eleven. Five times eleven. This is how many sets you have. This is how many are in each set. <laughs> She's learning how to talk, you guys. In this last week, she started making a lot more noise. I was hoping she'd stay asleep this whole time, but as long as she's not crying, we're both okay. Okay, you need to make five sets of 11 on your mats. You do that while I do this. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. It's a lot easier for me to make a circle. Your ones are squares, but you have paper and I do not. So I'm gonna make circles and I think you'll know what I mean. One set. Two sets of 11. Three. 11. Four. 11. Five sets. I do 11. You do yours. If 
five sets of 11. We start in our smallest place value. Our smallest place value is our tens or our ones. Our ones is our smallest place value. How many ones are in each set of 11? In each, in each set, how many ones are there? There's one one in each set of 11. So what is five? sets of one. Five sets of one is five. <laughs> five ones. How many tens are in each set of 11? How many tens are in each set of 11? In this set of 11, how many tens? In this set of 11, how many tens? There is one 10 in each set of 11, but we have five sets of 11. So what is five sets of 10? Five sets of 10 is five tens. What is five tens? Count by tens, five, 10, uh, not by fives, count by tens, 10, 20, Five tens is 50, plus five ones gives you 55. Okay, moving over to our vertical equation. We're gonna multiply one place value at a time, starting our smallest place value, which is our ones. Moving up first. What is five sets of one? Five sets of one one. Is five ones. Then you go to your next place value, which is our tens. Five sets of one ten each. Five sets of ten. Five sets of 110 is 50. You do not write the zero, because that's the ones place. We don't have a zero in our ones place. We have a five in our ones place. So what is 11 times five? 55. Okay. This is something I expect to see from all of you. I'm gonna put the next equation on the board. I'm gonna start setting it up. But what I need you to do then, because I can't walk around the room and check, what you need to do is you need to please do your setup with your tens and your ones and get a piece of paper or an index card, something to write on, and write this equation. What I have on my whiteboard, I wanna see in a picture on your dojo or have your mom or dad text it to me or send me an email. I need to see that everyone knows how to do this. So if you need to ask them for help, rewind the video and let them know that this is what I'm asking of you, okay? Here's your next equation that you are going to do. Three times 32, you'll have your tens You'll have your ones. And then you have your equation. Three times 32. If I have, I'll do one set for you. We have three sets of 32. So one, 10, 20. There's 30. I have one, two. There's one set of 32. One, two. You need three sets of 32. What I'd like for you to do is everyone needs to pause the video and do this. Set it up, do the multiplication, set up your mats, tens and ones, Fill in the blank here, do the multiplication equation vertically. 
take a picture, upload it under your dojo portfolio. Um, if you're having trouble with that, let me know. Um, otherwise, if you can't do that, have mom or dad text me a picture or email me a picture of your setup with your mats and your two equations written, okay? Pause and do that. Okay, hopefully you pause the video. Me, hey, Gwampy, you're Gwampy. Hopefully you paused the video and did that because now we're moving on to the last part that says that we are going to solve a multiplication math story, okay? Mrs. Bryant bought two packages of cookies. Each packet contained 12 cookies. How many cookies did Mrs. Bryant buy? Two packages of cookies. Two packages of cookies, so there's your sets. In each package of cookies were 12 cookies. So two packages, 12 cookies in each. How many cookies did she buy? Okay. Do it this way. Do your two times 12. I will also accept 12 plus 12. Because repeated addition is the same as multiplication, although I hope that you will try them this way. Hope you'll try them this way so that you can get that multiplication down because you won't get it until you do some practice okay so if you draw a picture to illustrate if you draw a picture here's my packages of cookies she bought two packages of cookies and there are 12 cookies in each package Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve cookies in this package. Twelve cookies in this package. Drew a picture. You could write two times twelve or twelve plus twelve. I'm choosing multiplication. Okay. gives you 20. So there should be 24 cookies. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Do the next one all on your own. I'm just going to read it to you. Grab some paper or grab a pencil. Write this stuff down. Oh, honey, we're almost done. Oh. Oh. Here's your next one. There are three students playing a math game. Each student has 11 markers. How many markers are there all together? How many markers are there all together? Text pages 279 through 200. Well, let's see. Hold on. 279. Wait a second. Oh, yo. Oh, no. I'm sorry, guys. You're going to do number one, 
on 200. No. I'm sorry. On page 280. Number one. On page 280, do number one. On then you'll do work text 281 and 282, the front and the back. Okay. As always, guys, ask for help if you need it. Let me know if you need any help. See you guys later.